Howdy everyone, today I'm going to be talking about something that's been pretty heavily requested and I've procrastinated on for I think a year now. A lot of people come into my chat and ask me, what are the best controller settings? What do you use? What button layout do you use? What's your sensitivity? What's the best controller? So now I'm finally just going to make a full video talking about all of this stuff and everything you need to know and how to basically decide on these factors yourself, not just my settings. Now that I've gotten my new controller in the mail, I thought it would be good timing to do this. I'm gonna be real, this is probably not gonna be the most entertaining video, I'm not gonna put some crazy gameplay over it most likely, and it might be a little longer, but I'm going to provide timestamps to different things if you want to see a specific area of the video. Okay, so we'll basically just start with my settings for people that want to know it. I play on a bumper jumper base layout, but it is custom, again, based on bumper jumper, where I use my right bumper to swap weapons to my special weapon, my left stick click to grenade, my left rear button because I use a battle beaver controller is set to sprint which is mapped to my Y button, my right rear button is crouch which is mapped to my B button, and my dodge ability is a cord between both of my rear buttons which is pressing Y and B at the same time. As far as my sensitivity, I usually play on 9, sometimes 8 with a 0.8 sensitivity modifier. My ADS would be equivalent to 7.2 or 6.4 with each of those given sensitivities. Remember, for your ADS sensitivity modifier, you just multiply your sensitivity by the modifier. So in this case, I'm taking 9 and multiplying it by 0.8, and that gives you your ADS sensitivity. So that's how you're going to want to play around with that. My sprint turn scale is 0.8, so that's the fastest it can possibly be. So it's one to one, I believe, with walking turn sensitivity. Lastly, just for miscellaneous stuff, my vibration is turned off. I do not suggest playing with vibration at all. It might be weird to take it off the first time and you might feel like it's giving you some sort of a response. I assure you it's much better to not use vibration and it's probably reducing the precision in your shot. Please trust me on this. Turn vibration off if you have it on. So let's talk about how you can create your own button layout that's very effective. I think there are some key objectives that you have to keep in mind while making a button layout with the custom options that we have now in Destiny 2. Number one, you want to avoid assigning any important or frequent actions to your face buttons, which is the A, B, X, Y on the Xbox controller, shapes on the PS4 controller, and whatever else, the face buttons. Secondly, I think you want to minimize on double press commands because these are an instant and I believe can add a little bit of wear to the controller's buttons. Lastly, you want to make it as natural and comfortable as possible. Now, when you're changing button layouts, it's always going to be a weird period, but you want things to feel fluid and you don't want to feel strain. I think that's what I mean mainly by making it natural and comfortable. I should mention here, if you're using a default controller, one without rear buttons, you should use double press commands as well as cords to try and keep as many important actions away from the face buttons. That's like the main thing you want to keep in mind, but again, keep it natural, no strain. So I'll give you guys some examples for each of those bullet points and objectives and how I incorporated them into my layout. So with my layout, I keep those key frequent actions away from my face buttons. So being able to swap weapons with my right bumper allows me to remain on target and aiming while swapping from another weapon. I think this is really key in Destiny because putting in chip damage with a special weapon or a primary and then swapping to the other weapon. So let's say you deal big damage with a sniper, swap to a hand cannon or deal damage with a hand cannon, swap to clean up with a shotgun. That's really integral to high level play. So I really think that's a perfect example of why you want to keep this away from your face buttons. Keeping jump on my left bumper does have a similar effect where I'm able to jump and move freely while aiming and remaining on target. This might not be as convenient for some people as using a rear button to jump though because you do have to move your index finger away from the jump to ADS and between those two. As far as a good example for our next objective, which is minimizing on those double press commands, I actually moved my hunter dodge away from a double tap because I always disliked how that wasn't something I could trigger instantly, despite actually being such an important ability in combat. I know not all of you guys are going to be playing hunter, but this is my applicable example here. The same applies though to something like Icarus Dash or other dodge movement abilities that exist. Using a cord between my two paddles allows me to hunter dodge in an instant, but still without any sort of strain or unnecessary button presses. 
and it also works with my paddles being sprint and slide so i can very fluidly sprint slide instantly but then also dodge right after doing so. Again, all very fluidly, no strain whatsoever. For our last objective point about making a comfortable button layout, for me, it was very uncomfortable to repeatedly click the left stick to sprint and slide. And that's actually led to a lot of hand pains for me. So I actually put grenade there instead because I use that less frequently, but I don't mind clicking once in a while. The left stick grenade allows me to still place them with precision while aiming, but also allows me to move my sprints to one of my rear buttons, where then both my rear buttons, I can very fluidly and quickly sprint slide nearly instantly with pretty much no strain whatsoever. So it's very comfortable. Now let's move on to our sensitivity and talk about how you figure out the best sensitivity for you. I think the way that Formal, who is a recently retired Call of Duty and Halo pro put this really always stuck out at me. You want to try and play on as fast of a sensitivity as you can before feeling like you're losing some sort of precision. You should be able to naturally feel like you have precision without thinking too hard or like paying too much attention to it, but play on the highest sensitivity possible before feeling like you're giving that up. You really want to utilize the ADS sensitivity modifier to help you find a mix of speed and precision because that'll allow you to get a better mix of turn speed and maintained precision as I explained with my settings much earlier in the video. With sensitivity options, higher sense doesn't always mean better. We have some crazy sensitivity options on controller now, but higher doesn't always mean better. I think the way to think about this is that with a higher sensitivity, you might sacrifice a bit more precision but you gain the ability to put yourself in more chaotic scenarios, especially within close range, and you can still flick around and snap around and keep up. With a lower sensitivity, you gain more precision, but it's gonna require you to have a lot more strict positioning and really great centering as you won't be able to turn quick enough in close range or during some chaotic engagements to keep up. My sensitivity personally, I'd say is moderate high. I play at eight or nine, usually nine, to give me a good ability to turn quickly and center on different places quickly from the hip but a slower 0.8 ADS modifier that brings my sensitivity down to 7.2 while aiming down sights, and that'll give me some strong precision on target. So this is essentially going to rely on me to have good positioning more than anything, but also not holding my ADS too often to be restricted to my slower sensitivity. So center everywhere from the hip, then ADS only when needed, and that'll have a big focus once again on just really good centering. There's also different types of aiming. Some people like to flick a little bit more on controllers. Some people like to track a little bit more. Some people aim with their right stick more and have a little bit more snappiness to it. Some people aim more with their left stick and try and just follow a target with their movement. I am more of a left stick aimer, I wanna say, but keep this in consideration when thinking about your sensitivity and how high or low you wanna keep it at. Now let's talk about our hardware, our actual controller. So I don't believe paddle or rear button controllers are mandatory, but they definitely help for reducing strain if nothing else. I do believe though that they give you more ability to be quicker and more places to avoid using face buttons. So that'll allow you to aim more while performing actions. However, that being said, if you are using a default controller, Try and keep most of your important actions off of the face buttons like I mentioned. And again, utilize the cords and double tap functions to avoid assigning things to your face buttons. That being said, if you're looking to invest in a high-end or competitive controller or a paddle controller, whatever you want to call it, here are my thoughts on the common brands. Starting with Scuf, I think they're reputable, a lot of people enjoy them. I hear about the paddle modules breaking easily though, but a lot of people say they're easily replaceable. They offer some moderate customization options, I think mainly with appearance. And my deal breaker here though, and why I didn't go with them, is that the paddles feel way too stiff when I tried them. They literally feel to me like they require seismic force to click on and doesn't allow me to fluidly and easily perform frequent actions without strain, like my little sprint slide combo. So that was a deal breaker for me. And I also dislike the angle that they're placed at. So yeah, didn't really like those too much. 
The Elite Series 2, this is probably the controller I have the most experience with because I used it the longest. I think that this is one of the most ergonomic controllers and feels one of the best. And it's very accessible because you can just go to most retailers and pick one out. You also have on this controller probably the best paddle system available and it's got some decent interchangeable parts. However, the deal breaker here is it feels like it's built out of paper. And this is quite the story to dive into. I've been through 11 Elite Series 2 controllers since they got released. Granted, I play frequently and intensely around 8 hours a day, but the common issues I experienced with each controller was number one, the bumpers start to double input. This was the most frequent issue. That means it's registering two clicks per one. And eventually after, if you do put up with that, they just also start to not work on each click. The left stick also starts to have slight stick drift, didn't encounter this really on my right stick ever, but on my left stick, starts to have some slight stick drift, but if you ignore that, eventually it starts to just not work reliably with forward input, meaning not register forward input. Lastly, occasionally the face buttons would start to not properly respond, meaning you'd press it multiple times and get no response. These issues would often arise, I want to say, as soon as two to three weeks and as late as a month and a half to two months after starting to play with the controller. The worst part is here, tolerating them would simply just make the problems worse, as I mentioned with inputs just not working. Seeing as I went through so many controllers though, I was pretty scared that I was the main problem, that maybe I was like death gripping my controllers, but after doing some research online, I found that many others, especially those who play bumper jumper or actively use their bumpers for actions, had a similar result. I was fully relieved though of any doubt I had whenever I called a GameStop once looking for a new Elite Series 2 urgently and they actively tried not to sell it to me. They mentioned that they no longer offer warranty on it because of how frail they are and they recommend that people don't buy them because of how frail they are. I had to tell them multiple times that I was well aware of these issues before they even sold it to me and I'm led to believe that there's a possibility that they're actually losing money from them because of people returning them or needing to replace them within the return policy period. These elite controller issues are very much known and I don't believe Microsoft has addressed them and that really solidified it for me. So why did I keep using the elite controller for so long? I think the ergonomics of the controller really is top notch and the paddle system is fantastic. More importantly, even though they're built kind of bad or pretty badly, Microsoft has a pretty great warranty system that essentially lets you send it in and get a replacement, not repair, back in a couple days, which is pretty good, not too bad. The unfortunate part about this though is that I believe that they send you refurbished controllers, I'm not 100% just guessing, as these replacements generally felt like they would have some inconsistencies with their stick tension and feel a little bit worn already. Not to mention, I started feeling common problems on the controllers just sometimes a week into using it. Above all though, sending in a controller and having to relearn that muscle memory with these inconsistent units was so incredibly infuriating that most of the time, I actually just put up with the problems until I was absolutely forced to get a new one. So if you are okay with just sending in the controller repeatedly, I mean, hey, the Elite controller is a great feeling controller. It just doesn't really last you very long mainly and especially if you utilize your bumpers frequently. Little tidbit here on the Astro controller, I think this is a cool concept and the modular controller thing is really cool, but I've read and researched many problems with the replacement modules and slow turn with the stick modules, which if they're inconsistent, to me, defeats the point of a modular controller. Again, I do not want to keep relearning muscle memory here. That leaves us with the Battle Beaver. This is the controller I purchased and landed on. I'm not partnered with them, and this was my own purchase, although I'd love to be partnered given the opportunity. This controller looked like the best option to me. This is because it offered the most customization. This means personalization options and custom colors, as well as functional options in terms of how many buttons you want spread over the controller, as well as how they're assigned. You still have a remap functionality and where you want them placed. It really felt made to order, just made specifically for you. And I like that a lot. There's a lot more customization than scuff. And I feel like these guys are still a little bit grassroots to the point where it's 
it's not like factory made type thing so it does really feel made to order and i love that to counter the elite series 2 controller if you wanted an xbox one battle beaver they actually do have an option where they replace the bumper sensors with a better one which is pretty funny but actually really useful i personally got a series x controller so they don't have that option available yet i guess but so far with my Series X controllers, they've been a lot better on the bumpers and that was mainly an Elite Series 2 problem. My point is, is they have a lot of customization that improves the durability and functionality of the controller, as well as gives you the personalization to just have a really, really cool controller. I've always heard some great things about these controllers, but something that swayed me was that if you're familiar with Call of Duty and the Call of Duty League, which is the esports league for Call of Duty, I believe over half the league uses Battle Beat for controllers, despite the league being sponsored by Scuf. To me, that says that as much as I believe some of these players or most of them are partnered with Battle Beaver, that speaks a lot to their reputability and durability at a competitive level. If these players prefer to use this controller and they can use it at the highest level of competition, to me, that, uh, that means a lot. Coming from the Elite controller and being absolutely in love with how the paddles feel, I was a bit worried about going to rear buttons on the Battle Beaver, but I was actually pleasantly surprised. They're really, really easy to click. I like them a lot. They're very clicky as well, which I enjoy. They take no strain whatsoever. Again, very easy to click. And they're kind of like omnidirectional. So it's just like applying a little bit of pressure on these small buttons and you'll get your action, which is really great. As far as longevity, I'm hoping that this controller will last me a long time i've heard a lot of players and from those that have them in the destiny community that they've lasted them quite a long time there's some players that i regard as great players that use them and are intense on their controllers and they say they've hadn't had many issues if any at all but what i love about this company as well is they're very transparent if you go to their faq they do state that for some of the most competitive and frequent playing players or intense players there may be issues that arise there's nothing that they can stop this it's still based off of a stock xbox controller or playstation controller and these parts are not keeping up with the demand needed in some of these games with the advanced movement and all the inputs I love that they're very transparent about this and they do say of course that they I believe will repair your controller if things do happen of course you have to send it in which sucks but I like the transparency that means a lot to me so that's why I went with a battle beaver and I'm pretty happy about it last thing to talk about in this long video here is is claw a solution is playing claw okay yeah, I think playing Claw is good. It's okay. It works if you have a default controller and you don't want to invest in these higher end controllers and worry about potentially replacing them or repairing them, but you are giving up something else as a cost and that's your health. I'm someone that used to play Claw pretty frequently and I even still switch grips to Claw occasionally when I'm playing to press some of my face buttons. And I've really tried to get away from that because in this past year, I've seen some pretty bad hand problems and wrist problems that have arisen from that. And it's really not good. The strain that it puts on your hands, I think, is just not great. I think it's just not very healthy. So I don't recommend it. I know it sucks. If that's what you got to do, you got to do it. If that's what you feel like is, you know, the best for your scenario and what you have available, I get it. But remember that your health is really important. And again, from someone that has felt like I'm starting to encounter some health issues with my hands because of that, I recommend against it. So that's what I've got to say on that. Anyways, I'm gonna end this long video. I hope this just about covers literally everything having to do with controllers, layout, sensitivity, all the rest, at least for Destiny 2 and what I can speak to. So hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching. Take it easy, everyone.